lot of you have been asking for it. Here it is, our November forecast for 2019. Now we're going to go over our precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and our overall forecast at the end, which is that pretty map that you saw in the thumbnail. Now, before I get started with the video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. And also, as always, be sure to share the video to your Facebook or with your friends if you feel like they will find it helpful, useful or interesting. Now, we're going to do this layer by layer, like always. We're starting out with our slightly above average precipitation regions. There is two of these regions. You can see we have one up there for Montana. This is where we expect a lot of clipper systems to come down and bring an above average amount of precipitation. Now for the East Coast, we're expecting a nor'easter pattern to get started and shape up. This will either lead to Appalachian runners, which is going to be a more inland track that is very similar to a nor'easter, which would go over the Appalachians, obviously, or we'll see a nor'easter type storm track where we see them along the coast. We'll probably see at least a few of both of those types of storms throughout the month of November. This will lead to at least slightly above average precipitation in all of these green areas along the east coast. Now let's add our second layer of green here. You can see that this extends from inland there in the northeast all the way through some areas of the Great Lakes, the eastern regions of the Great Lakes, and then down through the Appalachian Mountains down into the Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. Now again, this is has a lot to do with our more inland storm track, which I think will be a little bit more common than the one along the coast. This is going to lead to a moderately above average amount of precipitation for these inland regions. And I do believe that it will be quite noticeable that it's above average precipitation. So it's going to be quite a wet month for a lot of these regions in this darker shade of green there along the east coast. Now let's go ahead and get started with your below average precipitation region. Here you can see from the northwest down through California in the four corner states and then back up into the Midwest, we have a slightly below average precipitation region. Now this is an area where it might not quite be noticeable, especially I think for those Midwest areas up there uh, and in some of the central plains there near Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska. I think that that storm track that's going to bring precipitation up there to Montana will also track into a lot of these states. It just won't have quite as much energy left over to drop quite as much precipitation for these regions and also these areas average more precipitation than Montana does. So that has a lot to do with why there's above average precipitation in Montana and below average precipitation in the Midwest and central United States. Now we have a second shade of brown here for the Northwest, the coastal Northwest. You can see there for Washington, Oregon and the mountains of California. There's as well as a sliver of the Northern coasts of California up there. Uh, we, we're going to be seeing an, a noticeable amount of below average precipitation. and It'll be quite the dry month, actually. We've been seeing quite a good amount of precipitation for a lot of these regions. So uh, it's kind of, it's fine that we're going to see less. But for California, however, it's not very good news with all those fires we have out there. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it doesn't look like we're going to have much relief from those dry conditions whatsoever. It looks like it's actually going to get more dry than it has been. And I know that's terrible news. Now let's get into your temperature forecast. First things first, we're going to look at the above average temperature regions. We have one there for Florida and then one there along the West Coast and for the Southern Four Corner States. Now in these areas, it's going to be slightly above average temperatures, but really it won't be quite noticeable. Maybe some areas out there in the West, it might be a little bit noticeable. But for the most part, when I only make this the first shade of any color, it usually means that I'm not expecting it to be too noticeable. On paper, though, it will be a little bit above average. Now, that's our only above average temperature region. As here's our slightly below average temperature region, you can see from the northwest all the way into the Midwest, Great Lakes, south central United States, including the deep south, and then for the northeast and mid-Atlantic regions. This is all with the exception of the southeast there along the coast, where we're going to be expecting average conditions with the exception of Florida, where we'll be, we'll be seeing above average temperatures as we, as we had mentioned before. Now, this is a giant area of below average temperatures and welcomed change, I'm sure, for a lot of you in the deep south and mid-Atlantic regions, as we've been dealing with a lot of warmth in these regions. Uh, as for the Midwest, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys want it to be warm right about now, but more cold is on the way as here's our second shade of blue. This is where, again, it'll be more noticeable. You can see from Montana down through into Missouri and then back up through the Great Lakes and everywhere in between there, 
We're going to be seeing moderately below average temperatures, and this is where there's going to be frequent cold shots, and it's going to be very, very noticeable that it is cold. Uh, as for this time of year, when we do see below average temperatures, that means pretty much for these regions, Arctic air will be in the area at times. And here's even our third shade of blue for Montana there and the Dakotas as well as Minnesota and a little bit of Wyoming and Nebraska there. This is where frigid air is going to be very, very common uh, and there will be not a lot of warm-ups from that frigid air, maybe a few at times. The confidence gets lower as we get later into the month, so there is more potential for warm air at the end of the month than the beginning because at least for the first half, we don't see any relief from the cold air whatsoever for these regions. It's looking to be a very frigid November for these regions. And if I'm not mistaken, this is quite similar to last November where it was very, very cold for a lot of these similar regions, uh, specifically the east. I remember it was quite cold last November and it looks to be the same. Even, just If you're in the first shade of blue, that doesn't mean you're not going to get cold shots. Okay, So along the east coast, you could be dealing with cold times and even the, tomorrow so the first second third of november i'm seeing where along the east coast it's going to be very very cold and the coldest air of the season actually so a lot of you are looking forward to the colder air it's going to be cooler than it has been before for the very very beginning of november here now let's get into our overall forecast I'm going to start things off in the northwest where we're expecting dry conditions there for the Pacific Northwest, like I said before. And then again, the mountains of uh, California as well, we're expecting more dry conditions, which again is quite bad news. Now, for that little gray area there in Washington and Oregon, I didn't have anything notable to say about those regions. So just expect average conditions for the most part or equal chances of going in any direction. Now for this orange area in the southwest, that's where we're expecting warm and dry conditions here in this beautiful shade of orange. Looks like uh, fall colors on a red maple, so very beautiful color there. <laughs> but we're expecting warm and dry conditions, which again is bad news for California specifically. In this white region though, for the Rockies, we're expecting more snow similar to the conditions we had in October. Maybe not quite as potent with the snow because we broke a lot of records for the amount of snow we had there in October. So we might not be breaking records necessarily, but I don't see the snow slowing down whatsoever for these regions as we head into November. Now for that area in Texas and, and Oklahoma as well there, that tan shade, that's where we're expecting dry conditions for the most part, but it's going to be pretty close to average in all areas. So not a lot to note in that tan area. Brutal cold for these dark blue regions up there in Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, as well as a little bit of Minnesota and Nebraska as well. Again, this is where we expect Arctic air to enter and it's going to be very unseasonably cold. Uh, we have our third shade of blue, which I don't always break out. You can look back at our monthly forecasts. I don't usually use the third shade of blue. That it takes a lot for me to do that. So it's going to be very, very potent cold for these regions. And I have pretty high confidence that these regions for most of November will be very unseasonably cold. Expect it to be brutal for these regions. Now, in your pink regions to the southeast, though, we are expecting frequent cold shots and sometimes even similar conditions to that dark blue region. It just won't be quite as consistent. But when those cold shots do come through, it will be potent. And again, I want to mention as well, these blue areas and pink areas, just because you're not in the white doesn't mean you're not going to get snow. I do expect these regions to see snow as we did in October. It's just that there is more... Uh, notable things to mention for these regions like the brutal cold. I think that that's going to be a little bit more prominent than the amount of snow you'll be seeing. Now for this turquoise color down there in coastal Texas as well as up through the Mississippi River, we're expecting relief from the heat. It is going to be slightly below average temperatures for these regions, which again hasn't been the case for the past month. So this is very good news for you guys. You guys have been wanting the cold and you're going to get it. Now it is the same story for a lot of these light green regions, but there is a more prominent feature for these regions as well, similar to the pink and blue areas. We're going to be seeing nor'easters for this region, even though we will be seeing cold. That doesn't mean uh, we won't be, but we are going to be seeing nor'easter patterns set in and frequent storms to track through this area. And I think that's the most prominent feature for the month of November for these regions through the mid-Atlantic, coastal northeast, and as well as the southeast now, warm and wet there for Florida, that's pretty exclusive. We're going to be dealing with warmer temperatures, but it's going to be very similar as far as precipitation to those light green shades. Now, last but not least, for the Northeast and New England, this is the most exciting area because we're going to be seeing multiple snow chances for this region, and I'm quite confident in that. Maybe even further south than I'm showing this, but I went ahead and went with the safe side. 
It's not very far from normal to see multiple snow chances for this region. And you might be wondering, what do I mean by snow chances? I mean, I'm not guaranteeing there will be a snowstorm, but there is going to be multiple setups and systems that we see that we're thinking could be a snowstorm and it could go either way. So possibly it tends trends to be rain instead of snow, but on the models for the day's Prior, we would have seen a chance at snowfall for these regions, and I expect a lot of close calls like that, and a couple of them, going based on odds, will most likely bring snowfall to these regions, and we did see snowfall last November for these regions, especially Pennsylvania and the Northeast. Um, I don't know quite about uh, northern Kentucky and Ohio, but I know for West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and up into the New England states, we did see snowfall in November, last November, and I do expect that that is possible this month once again. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this November forecast. Again, be sure to share this with your friends and family on Facebook so they can see this if you do find think that they'll find it useful or interesting, and be sure to subscribe if you did enjoy the video and you haven't already. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.